If you look into your text carefully, you will find that James Kirkup starts with Remember, no men are strange, no country is foreign. And ends with no men are foreign, no country is strange. And so, I'm back with another video on No men are foreign. Remember, no men are strange, no country is foreign. Beneath all uniform, a single body breathes like ours. The land our brothers walk upon is earth like this in which we all shall lie. They too, aware of sun, air and water, are fed by peaceful harvest and by cold winter starved. Their hands like ours and in their lines we read a labor not different from our own. Remember, they have eyes like ours that wake or sleep and strength that can be won by love. In every land is a common life that we all can recognize and understand. Let us remember, whenever we are told to hate our brothers, it is ourselves that we dispossess, betray and condemn. Remember, we who take arms against each other, it is the human earth that we defile. Our hells of fire and dust outrage the innocence of air that is everywhere our own. Remember, no men are foreign. No country is strange. James Kirkup, born in 1918 and died in 2009. He lived for 91 years and he was a poet from England. He had seen the evils of war, the hatred that war brings. He has also seen that how these national issues and world politics destroy the very mindset of individuals. He left England in 1956 to live and work in the different parts of Europe, America and Far East and, and lived in Japan for 30 years. He had visited countries that had played major role in world wars. After coming out from England and being with different kinds of people for 10 years, he had seen, he had seen that there is xenophobia. Being a person from different country and visiting uh, other people's country, he found that there is xenophobia among humans. Xenophobia is the fear of foreigners. No child is born with xenophobia, but as they grow older, because of the environment, because of what people say, it starts to develop in a child, in a person. The setting of the poem, as you will find, is a uh, military type because he talks about uniforms, wars, long winter stuff and peaceful harvest, strength, hate, betrayal, dispossession, condemnation, arms, hells of fire and dust. James Kirkup says, uh, remember again and again because it is his concern that we should not forget that at the end of the day in spite of all our differences and strange habits and traditions and culture we are all humans. James Kirkup has traveled around the world and found out that we live and breathe and survive on the same earth and under the same soil, we all will be buried after we die. We all need sun, air, and water, and so do they. People of other races, we, we are common because whatever, whatever basic needs we have, they have the same needs. Look at how he's using the natural elements to, to convey also nature provides us equally. Nature does not distinguish between different races. In this poem, you will find that James Kirkup uh, speaks a lot about the natural elements and the role of nature in treating humans equally. Second stanza, the very important thing that I need you to remember is that we all have hands that labor, eyes that wake and sleep. We all have strength that can be won by love and we all share the same common life. The lines in their hand, the rashes in their hands due to hard work shows that their hard work are also not different from our own. They also feel the pain, 
feel the toughness, feel the roughness of the reality and they work hard. In this stanza, James Kirkup talks about how people work to earn with their hands, how other people wake and sleep, the daily happening things. And, and he talks about how they can be very strong, but still they can be won over by love. Here talking about hands, eyes, and life, it means that their daily lives are just like our daily lives. In every land is a common life that all can recognize and understand. Here this common life, trying to live and survive on this earth is something common to all humankind. So that is why we can easily recognize and understand the hardships of one another. So in those lines, James Kirkup talks about peaceful and similar life of all mankind. Talks about their love for peace and their hardships to work and survive. So he uses a lot of uh, natural things that, or about the environment to emphasize or stress or um, make people understand that we should remember that we are not different we are all one we are we all belong to the human race and nature is providing us with peace nature is providing us all equally and we should try and learn to live together in peace and harmony but the next stanza the next lines onwards James Kirkup talks about how we as humans, we try to destroy ourselves. Whenever we are told to hate our brothers, it is ourselves that we are trying to condemn or dispossess or betray. The last stanza is a very strong one. It, uh, it talks about war. It feels like James Kirkup is pouring his heart out to tell us how much he hates violence and how much he wants peace and how much he feels that we humans are all one. He, he, he finds that uh, we have no reason to fight one another because he had lived amongst different races of people from Japanese to Americans to different European people and the English people and he found out that yes our culture may be different our traditions may be different but deep inside everything is same and by trying to destroy one another's country what are we trying to prove we destroy the other people's country and don't you think that we are going to breathe the same air with which we poisoned other people Remember, we who take arms against each other, here he is directly targeting the people who are in the military. Saying that people in, in the military army who, who are taking arms against one another, people who are trying to uh, breed hatred among people, he is directly targeting people who are involved in killing and destroying whether it is the terrorists or the people in the army. Our health of fire, health of fire here, we can assume that it's talking about uh, shooting and bombs and uh, shooting of bullets and bomb blasts and burning down of villages and burning down of uh, different countries. The first lines talk about nature's giving attitude and also talks about how nature tries to bring peace among humans, peace and unity among humans. And in the last two stanzas, James Kirkup talks about how humans destroy nature. Nature gives peace, love, unity, harmony, and humans try to destroy the same nature that is providing it with all the comforts of the world. We defile our earth and with our hells of fire and dust, we outrage, we disturb the innocence of the air. We destroy the clean air. We pollute it with our own works. He concludes, reminding us once again that remember, no men are foreign and no country strange. Now the poetic devices used by James Kirkup in his work, No Men Are Foreign, 
alliteration. Alliteration is the repeated use of sounds or letters. For example, body breathes, sleep and strength. The next poetic device that he used is enjambment. It means jumping from one line to another without using any punctuation. No comma, no column, no full stop. Enjambment examples are these. The next is a metaphor. It's like an idiom or a kind of like proverb where we are talking about one thing but we mean another thing. Uniform does not mean the uniform of uh, an institution or a, or, a, or a department but form here means could uniform here could mean the skin color. Beneath all uniform, a single body breathes. It could mean the different cultural dresses that we wear. Or it could mean the military uniform also. The health of fire here means bombarding, destroying, uh, both emotionally and literally destroying. War is uh, compared to winter. Harvest is compared to peace. And the last and easiest and most important one, repetition. Repetition means repeating the whole line or a single word. Repetition is used by poets to make the reader understand the things that the poet wants to emphasize. So here he uses the word no man has friends, no countries foreign. The repeated use of those words also shows that shows uh, James Kirkup's concern for the people to know that we are not different in any way. The repeated use of the word remember emphasizes the fact that James Kirkup wants us to never forget the fact that we are one.